covered Plex on this channel a number of times, but I figured it was time to take another look at it when it comes to installing on a TrueNAS server. Let's get started. Today's video is brought to you by Shaker and Spoon. More on them at the end of the video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. One of the most common reasons people get into running servers at home is so they can run Plex. Plex is a video and audio hosting service that acts as your own personal cloud streaming service, cataloging all of your music and movies and letting you stream them out to any device. The nice thing about Plex is it runs on almost any hardware or operating system from a Raspberry Pi to a Windows desktop, a Linux server on bare metal or as a virtual machine, or as a plugin for various NAS appliances. Four years ago, I did a tutorial on how to run Plex on a free NAS server, and given how much TrueNAS has changed since then, I figured it was time for an update. Now, there are two different variants of TrueNAS out there right now. There is TrueNAS Core, which is based on BSD, and TrueNAS Scale, which is based on the Debian kernel, and we're going to be using the latter in this tutorial. There are many different methods of running Plex inside TrueNAS Scale, and today I'm going to cover two of my favorites, Virtualized and Plugin. Both have advantages and disadvantages, so just follow the method that you think is right for your setup. The plugin install of Plex is very simple to get up and running. In fact, the entire tutorial could probably be done in the next two minutes. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. While this method is incredibly quick and easy, it does have one limitation that might end up being a deal breaker for some of you. If you rely on hardware acceleration for encoding your streams, and you use an NVIDIA GPU to do so, you'll want to fast forward to the virtualization guide later in this video. While hardware acceleration is supported by the plugin install of Plex, it only supports Intel QuickSync capable CPUs to do so, so NVIDIA GPUs are not supported here. If you are using an Intel CPU with QuickSync encoding, this is easily the method I would recommend. Being a plug-in, it's lighter weight than a full-fat virtual machine, and you don't have to worry about more complicated setups, like PCI Express pass-through or sharing your media directory through network sharing. It just works. Of course, it's also not as exciting to set up as a couple of clicks in the TrueNAS scale menu and you're off to the races. The first thing you'll want to do is actually create a dataset for Plex to use. Go over to the Storage tab inside TrueNAS and add a dataset to one of your storage pools. For my server, I'm going to name the dataset Craft Plex. To set up the Plex server, head on over to the Apps menu and click on Available Applications. Here you'll find a list of all the applications that have been ported over to use on TrueNAS Scale. Locate the Plex app and click on Install. Much like setting up a virtual machine, you'll be greeted by a short configuration wizard. Step 1 is giving your Plex server a name and selecting the version of Plex you'd like to run. Step 2 is the very welcome addition of linking your PlexPass account directly to the application. As PlexPass is required to enable hardware acceleration, you'll need to have this set up for the feature to be available. Visit plex.tv slash claim, log into your Plex account, and you'll be presented with a claim token. Just paste this token into the wizard and your new server instance will automatically be logged into your account when you boot up. The network configuration is where you'll set up the internal network port for the Plex web interface. I'd recommend leaving this at the default 32400. If you want to access Plex from outside your local network, you'll need to set up port forwarding on your firewall. As each and every firewall is different, you'll need to check your own documentation for instructions on how to do that. Storage is handled by linking a dataset on your TrueNAS scale server into Plex directly, with no network share setup required. Just enter in the local path you'd like to mount the share, in my case, forward slash Plex Media, then set the path in TrueNAS where the dataset is located. For the next options, just leave them all as default for now, unless you have specific reasons for changing them. Head down to step 8, confirm your choices, and then click on Save. And that is pretty much all there is to it. Move over to the Installed Applications menu, and you should see your new Plex server. While everything is spinning up for the first time, it will say Deploying as its status. Once it changes to Active, you're ready to start using it. Just like any other Plex installation, you'll need to add library folders and copy your media over to the new server. Since the library is just a dataset inside TrueNAS, the easiest way is to create a new share linked to that same directory. And that's pretty much it. Plex should now be up and running, ready for streaming your shows or movies, all from the comfort of your self-hosted home server. But wait, I promised two different ways to run Plex inside TrueNAS, so let's start on number two. 
While application integrations and Docker images are great, I'm a bit old school when it comes to virtualization. If I have the resources available to run a complete virtual appliance, that's what I prefer to do. I feel there are more options available for deployment, configuration, future expansion, and fewer potential issues when upgrading or updating services. Because Docker shares the kernel with the host OS, any kernel updates that you run on the host could potentially cause problems with services you're running in a Docker image. And it's not like Docker isn't a great tool to have in your back pocket, but I also don't feel that it's a robust replacement for traditional virtualization. If you watched my video last week on setting up a virtual machine in TrueNAS scale, you'll feel right at home with the beginning of this process. If you need a refresher or an explanation of each of the features available in TrueNAS scale, you can click the link right up here to get caught up. For running Plex, I'll be setting up a virtual machine with four cores and eight threads, eight gigabytes of memory, and configuring the CPU to use host pass-through, ensuring the guest is able to see Intel QuickSync as an available feature. The only change I'm making to the VM setup process is the addition of a graphics card, in this case an NVIDIA Tesla P4. This is a card I picked up a couple of months ago in hopes of testing it out in my cloud gaming server, but I just haven't quite gotten around to testing it. It's quite an expensive little card at $350, especially considering it's a compute-only GPU with no video outputs. On board is the GP104GL GPU, the same chip used in the GTX 1070, along with 8GB of GDDR5. However, unlike the 150 watt TDP of the 1070, here we have a cut down base clock of just 886 MHz with a 75 watt max power draw. We still get the same 1920 CUDA cores and dual NVENC encoders though. Not only can the card encode streams up to 8K resolution with 10 bit color in H.265, it also doesn't limit the max number of supported streams, unlike its GeForce counterparts, which are locked at two streams per NVENC chip. With the VM set up, I'm going to install Ubuntu Server 20.04. I'm not going to bore you with the install process, as it's just a vanilla install with OpenSSH enabled, but any Debian-based Linux distro will follow these exact same instructions. So get your OS installed, and I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Now that Ubuntu is booted up, it's time to install a couple dependencies along with the NVIDIA driver. First, I'm going to run a sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade to make sure the server is 100% up to date. The NVIDIA driver for Linux does require build essentials plus a couple other packages to install, so run an apt get install command and get these up and running. Before we install the NVIDIA driver, we'll need to disable the Nouveau generic driver included in the Linux kernel. A couple echo commands, followed by updating the root file system, will do just the trick. Just make sure to reboot the virtual machine for this to take effect. To install the NVIDIA driver, you'll want to locate the latest version by visiting nvidia.com drivers and searching for your specific GPU. While you can just download the install package directly and transfer it over to the VM, I prefer to run a wget command directly in Ubuntu. Just take note of the version number and paste in the following command to download the driver package. Once the VM is back up, we'll need to make the NVIDIA driver package executable by typing in sudo chmod plus x followed by the NVIDIA installer package name. Then type in sudo and execute the NVIDIA install package. Run through a couple dialog messages and your NVIDIA card should be ready to cut its way through your video streams. Well, just as soon as we get Plex installed. While you can download the package directly from Plex and install it manually, I prefer to add the Plex repository, allowing installation and updates to be integrated with the rest of your package management. Two quick commands will add the Plex repository, then just run sudo apt update, followed by sudo apt install Plex media server. Plex will also be kept up to date with all the other packages on your server when running apt update and apt upgrade. Since we're running Plex in a virtual machine, we don't have access to data on the TrueNAS server directly, so you'll need to mount a network share if you plan on hosting media with it. In my case, I have a network share for Plex already set up on another server, but you can just as easily configure your TrueNAS scale host with its own dataset. For instructions on setting up shares, you can click right up here to see my previous tutorial on that. To connect to a network share, you'll need to create a local directory to mount it to first. Type in sudo mkdir forward slash plexmedia to create a new directory at the root of your disk. Next, type in sudo nano slash etc slash fstab, which is where the root file system information is stored in Linux. To mount a share, it's as simple as entering in the network path to your share, in my case, two slashes followed by 10.0.0.221 slash plexmedia. The local directory on our Plex server will be forward slash plexmedia. 
Next up is the share type, which in my case is CIFS. Then we'll finish it off with the username and password for accessing the share. You'll also need to set two zeros at the end of the line, indicating the share should be mounted at boot up. With that done, go ahead and save the file and exit. When you reboot the server, the network share will automatically mount to the Plex Media directory you set up earlier. If you'd like to mount the folder without rebooting, it's as simple as typing in sudo mount-a to rerun the fstab process. Last but not least, if you're running a 6th generation or newer Intel CPU, or you have an NVIDIA graphics card passed through to a VM, you'll be able to take advantage of hardware encoding inside of Plex. This significantly reduces the strain on your system when transcoding media for playback remotely or for devices that don't support direct streaming. Remember, to enable hardware transcoding, you're going to need a Plex Pass subscription, which you can sign up for by going to plex.tv. To enable hardware encoding, go to the settings menu inside Plex, then select the Transcoder tab. Then just check the boxes that say use hardware acceleration when available and use hardware accelerated video encoding. And that's pretty much it. Two very different methods of running Plex on your home server, updated for running on TrueNAS scale in 2022. I know this video is a bit of a review for some of you, but there have been a ton of changes to TrueNAS over the last couple of years, especially when it comes to virtualization support. So I figured it would be nice to revisit this to make sure the information is 100% up to date. Before you head out, let me know down in the comments below if there's any tutorials on my channel that you think need a revisit, or if you have any new ideas for home server content. On your way down there, if you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. If you're wondering what I've been drinking during this episode, this is the El Palenque, courtesy of today's video sponsor, Shaker and Spoon. Now this may be primarily a beer channel, but make no mistake, cocktails were my first love. And as much as I try to keep a well-stocked bar here in the studio, tracking down fresh ingredients can be a bit of a chore, even for items I consider to be pretty standard, like Demerara sugar or syrup. That is where Shaker and Spoon comes in. Instead of needing to spend tens or even hundreds of dollars just to try out a new cocktail, they send you boxes based around a single spirit and enough ingredients to mix up 12 drinks. On the table next to me is the Fall for Mezcal box. I supply the Mezcal of my choosing. Shaker and Spoon sends out enough supplies and recipes for me to mix up three different cocktails. In this box, there's the Brush of the Bush, a botanical focused drink with a sage agave spritz and cherry vanilla bitters. The Abstract Distraction mixes things up with a wild rose infused strawberry jam and dried rosebuds. And finally, there's the El Palenque, which calls for two ounces of mezcal, three quarter ounce pineapple shrub, one quarter ounce demerara syrup, and topped with lemon lime ginger beer and a crispy pineapple slice. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly subscription service, delivering a spirit themed box straight to your door each and every month. Get yourself into the craft cocktail game without running all over town. Go to shakerandspoon.com slash craft to sign up and get $20 off your first box. That's shakerandspoon.com slash craft and a huge thanks again to Shaker and Spoon for sponsoring today's episode. And that is gonna do for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys. Boy, that is sweet and spicy and tangy and surprisingly smooth. Oh, this is like what a margarita wants to be. There's a fantastic evolution in this cocktail. It starts out very bright and summery with pineapple and ginger and that wonderful agave flavor that you get from the mezcal. But it finishes not quite a syrupy sweet, but a real rich caramel, oaky like sweetness that really just drives this drink home. While this is definitely intended to be more of a summertime drink, it's the middle of February and I'm not upset that I'm having it.